This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 8.5. We're going to look at Pascal's Triangle. And what you want to do is try to notice the pattern. And we have row 1, row 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And what do you want to notice first? Well, the easiest thing is there's 1s all the way down the outside. Now, let's take a look at this number. How does it relate to the numbers above it? Well, 1 plus 1 is a 2. Let's take a look at a harder one. This number, how does it relate to these two numbers? 5 plus 10 is 15. What about this number? 4 plus 6 is 10. So there's a pattern forming. So here we have 10 plus 10, this should be 20. Here, 1 plus 6, that's 7. 1 plus 7 is 8. And there's symmetry here. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 plus 1 is 8. And there's symmetry here. Okay, 6 plus 15 is 21. So we can just put 21 over here. 15 plus 20 is 35. So we can put 35 right here. 7 plus 21 is 28. 28. 21 plus 35 is 56, 56, 35 plus 35 is 70. And we can continue indefinitely. So here's what we notice. Each number is the sum of the two numbers above. We also want to note row n has n values. So row 3 has 1, 2, 3 values. Row 4 has 1, 2, 3, 4 values. Now, if you look hard enough, there's actually a relation between Pascal's triangle and combinations, which you just finished in the previous section. So, n choose r has the same value as the n plus oneth row and the r plus oneth number of that row. So, we can use combinations instead of Pascal's triangle for large or individual numbers to avoid computing a large triangle. So, here, in the 8th row, this value is 7 choose 1. This value is 7 choose 0. This value is 7 choose 7. This value is 7 choose 6. So, here's another example. Find the 8th and 10th numbers in the 12th row of Pascal's triangle. So we subtract 1 from the row, so we have 11, choose, and we take away one number here, so 11, choose 7. So we have 11, choose 7, and punch that in on the calculator, and you get 330. For our second number, we have 11, choose 10 minus 1, that's 9. So that's 11 choose 9, and that's equal to 55. And that completes this lesson.